everybody, and welcome to Gamer Vision, the show where we talk about all things gaming. I am your host, Jeff, from Just One More Level, and we have Tony from Procedurally Generated. How are you doing, Tony? Pretty good. How are you doing today? I'm uh, doing pretty well as well. Uh, finally got episode 14 taken care of, got it up on, on the, the, the YouTubes out there in the interwebs after so many technical difficulties to to, yeah. to deal with it seems uh, like anytime we have an episode that we think is good something always goes wrong on the back end to delay it yeah yeah whether it's like oh well you know half the episode the audio went out or but anyway it, for the most part I, I hopefully everyone out there is enjoying the episode if we got to you know you got me in on the hot seat on the the the, the question block you held your own you did pretty good three of five and and if I had just trusted my gut I would have had four mm-hmm. but I doubted my gut and I paid for it never doubt your gut but for this episode I, I think um, we're, we're reaching that point 2021 is starting to wind down it's coming to a close and we're already there's so many people all over social media and, and gaming networks and stuff that are already talking about this game's going to win game of the year 2022 we haven't even had the game of the year award. Well, as of this recording, we haven't even had the game of the game of the game awards. The game awards, yeah. <laughs> for or the Keeleys, as I call them. Yeah. So, like, we haven't even had that yet, as 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 far as uh, when this is being recorded. But people are already saying that God of War Ragnarok is going to win twenty uh, game of the year twenty twenty two. Breath of the Wild two is going to win game of the year twenty twenty two. I'm sorry, in a, in a year where we're getting a new Rabbids game, and I can't believe I'm saying this, in a year where we're getting a new Rabbids game, none of them have a chance to win Game of the Year. I mean, you know, and before the show, we, we talked a little bit about it. 2022, right now, is shaping up to be one of the most stacked years. Yeah. Uh, you you found a, a list of, of, re, of the known releases and speculated releases Just of 2022. a huge list of games that probably will come out, but yeah. a good portion of them will also get delayed. And just looking at that list, I mean, it is a... It is, it is stacked. You know, there is the potential chance of Breath of the Wild 2. There is the chance of God of War Ragnarok on top of Gran Turismo 7 and Elden Ring and Starfield and potentially Bayonetta 3. Uh, I, I saw somewhere on there possibly Splatoon 3. Yeah. Final Fantasy 16. Uh, Forspoken, uh, one that I'm really looking forward to, and I really, really, really hope it comes out in March, is Project uh, Triangle Strategy. Yes. Uh, been, been, I don't know if it actually comes through or not, but Mercenary Saga Chronicles. Been playing a little bit of, of that to try to tide me over with the, uh, the, the tactical RPG. But with this, I think we should dive in and and actually look at some of these games and see whether or not they're actually going to come out in 2022 because I've I've got my doubts, especially from some of them on on the Sony camp that tend to see fairly regular delays in their their, uh, their franchises. I just want... 2022 will have 2021's game of the year in it. It, (laughs) I'm considering... Halo Infinite, a 2022 release, even though technically it does come out this week. Um, yeah. Because the multiplayer co-op campaign will not be available till probably May, and that's when I'm going sure. to play the game. So uh, that is a 2022 release to me. And, I mean, just based on what I've been seeing from, from people playing the multiplayer... Oh, it's good. It really seems like it's a return to form for, for Master Chief. Uh, and all the Spartans out there with the multiplayer. So for the most part, like I, I haven't, uh, I haven't played the multiplayer yet. I've been kind of saving, saving that. But uh, I just re-upped on the, the game pass stuff. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be checking that out pretty soon. Yeah, I've played half a dozen matches of multiplayer on Infinite right now, and it's really good. Like I don't like competitive multiplayer shooters. It's just not my thing. Um, but the day it came out, I downloaded it. I was playing around with Ethan and Cole um, from the podcast and uh, messing around with some private matches. And then after we got done, I actually went in and played some 
matches against regular people and ended up having a good time. And I've played half a dozen matches. I think I've only won one. Like I'm I'm <laughs> I'm awful at the games. My my best KD ratio has been in the negatives. It's like nine <laughs> kills and twelve deaths. Um, has been the best I've done. But there's so many other things that you do in that that are you know they have the different objective based modes like the capture the flag and and you know the king of the hill type stuff and that's where i i feel like i can contribute more than you know just the straight shooting part of the game um but it's really good it's it's been really good so far uh my my history with halo started with reach and i actually played through that co-op with some friends who were living with me at the time and i've played every game that you can play co-op I've played through the campaign co-op, and so with the exception of probably Halo 1, uh, I've played every game alongside somebody else, and I think that's really made that series feel like a, you know, a co-op shooter series to me, rather yeah. than that solo go in and, you know, save the world by yourself. And that's, I think for the most part, that's kind of how most of my experiences with, uh, with Halo has been, is in that co-op setting. Um, Outside of the, the the first one, obviously, but uh, I'm kind of skeptical. Like, I feel like God of War Ragnarok could come out in 2022. I feel like it, it is it is possible. I think it's possible. I think, I think like four years, almost five years has has, uh, has transpired since the release of uh, uh, the uh, the PS4 God of War title. So I think it's possible. Like, I'm I'm definitely I'm not I'm completely ruling out the the first half of 2022 i i, I just do not see yeah. uh, that that game uh hitting before june like hopefully get a few more ps5s out in in the in the wild that's uh, going to be the biggest issue i think with 2022 is we're still going to see a bunch of the the console shortages yeah. and that's going to affect that could affect the release of a lot of these games still um and just what they what they did with the 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 pseudo reboot on the ps4 is was uh surprising with what they they accomplished with that i can't wait to see what they do when they've got even more power that they can play around with and speaking uh, of that that reboot it's going to be out in january on pc yes so which i you know, their people <laughs> die hard fanboys just up in arms about the fact that it's coming to pc but i mean it's it was like what 2018 like come on it's been four yeah. years since the game came out um, it's it's an old game at this point, and if other people yeah. that don't own PlayStations want to be able to play that game, and Sony <laughs> thinks there's yeah. money to be had, put it out. I don't care. Put it on the Switch. Um, um, Horizon Forbidden West. I I feel like it's it's going to hit in February. I know it, it it's had a couple delay mm -hmm. issues. It was supposed to come out this year, and well, all sorts of things uh, prevented that from happening. As but long as they don't figure out a way to delay Horizon to whenever Breath of the Wild 2 is going to come out, <laughs> it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> just just yeah. make sure those two games don't release on the same day. Yeah. And I remember back in, what was it, 2017? Uh, like, Horizon came out like a, like a week or two before uh, like the launch. Yeah, I guess yeah. it was 2017 because yeah. it was before the, the launch of the Switch. And people loved horizon they thought this was going to be the game of the year for 2017 then breath then, of the wild came out <laughs> just like two two ish weeks later yeah uh the, the switch launched with breath of the wild and people were like oh well uh this is better okay, maybe not maybe not <laughs> horizon, you, you had you had a chance you you had like a couple weeks of of, of true contention for this title yeah. um and and then link was like no this is mine what what are your expectations for for Breath of the Wild two? Like, do, do you think it? Do you think they could have a repeat of uh, just the 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 amazing experience that they had with the, the first Breath of the Wild? It's going to be really hard to top that experience because Breath of the Wild was such a different type of game to any Zelda game that we played before. Um, being able to go back into that world is going to be really fun. I haven't touched that game since the original launch so it's been four years since i've played that so it'll be really really nice to finally get back into uh into hyrule into that huge open world and run around hopefully i really and i don't know that this will ever be able to happen but i hope you can bring your horse from the first game to this one because 
I had, from launch day, I had a horse. I named my horse Switch the day I got Breath of the Wild. And uh, I used that horse the entire game. Even when I got Epona, I was like, nope, Epona, to the stables with you. I am taking Switch on this adventure, and you're out of luck. So I want to be able to bring Switch with me to the to the new game and play uh, Breath of the Wild 2 with, uh, with my horse. But no, I... I I really don't know what to expect. I think they'll probably put a little bit more of a focus maybe on some dungeon stuff again. Um, the the teasers that we've seen have seen Link and Zelda in some dark in, enclosed places. I hope we get a little bit more you know dungeon exploration. Um, know, aside from that, Elden Ring is probably the biggest launch that we see in February, if that game manages yeah. to make its February release. Yeah, that game's been... It, it seems like it's moving along pretty well, but... Uh, it, it's had some delay uh, issues. I mean, it's been in, de- in development for, for quite some time. Um, the one that I feel like will not come out in 2022, uh, I, do, I do not see Starfield coming out this no, year. No, I don't think so. I think that we're, we've barely seen anything of that yeah. game. Um, and that that's one of the things, uh, just to go on a little bit of a tangent, with... The, <laughs> I do it all the time. With the way... <laughs> Uh, video games are marketed and promoted they get so long like you you see a teaser trailer for a game four years before it comes out and then you just build that hype up over that period of time and cyberpunk it just it gets obnoxious at some point bethesda just doesn't have that that track record of being able to really hit release dates on time yeah Uh, but once Starfield comes out, you're guaranteed ten years of releases. But I, I know there's some like outside, uh, outside speculation that things like uh, possibly Splatoon three uh, hits in 2022. That, that's a that's it. I'd give that one a fifty fifty chance. The the high speculation that the Prince of Persia: Sands of Time remake uh, will hit in 2022, which. I feel like that was supposed to be out in 2019, and I feel like that was supposed to be out yeah. in 2020. I think that one has seen a bunch of uh, development issues as well. And as far as 2022 goes, it is a stacked year. It, it, it is looking like it is going to be a very, very good year. Um, there's probably three or four games, I think, that I'm really looking forward to coming out in 2022. Uh, Warhammer 40k Dark Tide. Okay. Which is uh, the 40k equivalent of Vermintide. Uh, this is a four-player co-op shooter, similar to you know Left for Dead, Back for Blood, that kind of thing. Set in the 40k universe, which I'm a huge fan of. I've been playing uh, tabletop Warhammer games for you know 20 years at this point. Total War Warhammer 3, which is coming to Game Pass mm-hmm. on day of, uh, as well as PC. That's real time real time strategy. Uh, set in the Warhammer fantasy universe. Uh, oh, fantasy. Yeah. Uh, orcs and elves and humans and all that kind of stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Shredder's Revenge. Cannot <laughs> wait for that game. Cannot wait for that game. That is oh. going to be so much fun. Uh, very much reminiscent of that old arcade game. Um, using the proper 80s turtle designs, which... You know, I am a child of the 80s. I'm very old and set in my ways. Those are the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to me. Don't care what any of these other releases are. Uh, But three games on the Switch that I'm really looking forward to in 2022 before we go. Uh, Mario and Rabbids, Spark of Hope. Most anticipated game, I will tell you right now. Unironically, cannot wait for that game. Um, I remember how excited you were at at E3 when... when... Uh, when that trailer started playing, I mean, that's, yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, which it makes the post-apocalypse look cute. Cannot wait for that. Uh, and then the Advance Wars uh, remakes oh, yeah. uh, the, or remasters for Switch. Yeah, those are going to be great. Um, so, like for for me, like God of War Ragnarok is definitely up there as far as like what I'm I'm excited for. Uh, for 2022, hopefully comes out in 2022. Uh, Project Triangle Strategy is... It, it, it's tough for me to say, but I, I think that's probably my number one game that I'm that I'm looking forward to. If it happens, Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. Um, 
those are probably my my three most sought after. Some of this stuff is going to get pushed back to twenty twenty three. If it's not because of development cycles, it's, it's because uh, because they got to make way for drill dozer. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, got, yeah, and and the Legend of Dragoon remake. Uh, that's uh, yeah, that they they, they have to give some. It's happening. They got to give some breathing room to these, you know, these, uh, you know, monolithic game releases. Kid Icarus Uprising uh, HD. But the, yeah, they, Zachary's they not doing do... anything right now. <laughs> yeah, he, his vacation should be over by now. Like uh, he's <laughs> he's had two weeks. Let's go. Yeah, but, uh, come on. What's the next thing? Uh, you're you're a golden goose. Let's, let's go. <laughs> um, but. In the comments, whether here on Facebook, Daily Motion, uh, YouTube, the procedurally uh, generated Facebook group, because we post these there too. We will see you with the next episode of Gamer Vision. <laughs> <laughs>